I think the first thing that sets us apart and very clearly sets us apart is the size of our economy. So we're not an economy that needs to depend on transshipment or bringing in, uh, uh, doing some little bit of reworking of, uh, of goods and then re-exporting. Our economy is the largest in the Middle East by far, and therefore we have a lot of consumption. We have a lot of export as well. So our ports have a big advantage compared to some of our competitors uh, in the region that it's mostly what they call OD, origin destination uh, cargo. So we need to bring in things and take out things out of the, out of the country. What we haven't done well, and which, which we're, it's a big shift in the last uh, two years, three years, is actually getting more re-export going and creating more bonded zones and therefore getting more tr transshipment. Uh, we already have uh, in the two main ports or three main ports on the west coast, we have about 90 to 95 percent of all transshipment in the Red Sea uh, ports, as well about 30 or 35 percent of transshipments on the east coast of Africa. So we have a vibrant transshipment culture on the or, or a business on the west coast uh, of the kingdom. What we're trying to do now, and with the help of the uh, customs organization, is to create more bonded zones. So we've had two historically in the kingdom, and we've announced the third one, and we have two more that we'll be announcing shortly, which hopefully will then stimulate even more demand within the kingdom. It's a tough time to be initiating the projects that you're initiating, not just because of the lower oil prices and the volatility in that market, but also because of uh, general fears about a potential recession in the United States and the slowing growth in China as well. When you take a step back, what are the challenges that you see over the next 10 years? I think we take a step back, a step back only to take 10 uh, forward. I mean, if you heard the whole, the whole theme of, uh, of this program that we just launched is miles ahead. Uh, and that's what we're planning on doing. So although we, are we may take a step back, it's really about launching ourselves. I think fundamentally, are there headwinds? I think there are always headwinds in any economy or any business uh, undertaking. But if the fundamentals are there, if the fundamentals are strong and uh, we have long-term investors, and we've had long-term investors, foreign investors in the, king in the kingdom for decades, they know that they're going to get over these cycles. So although there may be global headwinds that are affecting some uh, investor appetite, I'm confident with the right uh, structure that we have in terms of launching these new programs that foreign and local investors will be coming into these programs. And you don't anticipate that lower oil prices would impact what you're trying to do? Not in the short term, no. I think uh, it, it obviously puts constraints on the, on the budget, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to be uh, expanding as much as we can. Uh, one of the programs that's not part of the, of the uh, NIDLIB program, which is about the Ministry of Transport, is to ensure that our, the efficiency of our spend, both on an OPEX and a CAPEX, is as high as it can be, is as best as it can be. And we've taken steps to already improve that. And so e even in a, in, a, in a low oil price environment, we still see that we can do a lot with what we have, even kind of core government functions, if, you, uh, uh, if that's the right term, with, uh, quite, do quite a lot and also get it done as more efficiently than we did in the past. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersacci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.